In the book of Ecclesiastes, we see these words. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore let thy words be few. And our Lord also had a few things to say about words. We begin in Mark. All of these evil things come from within and defile the man. Our Lord taught us that our words have a spiritual connection to them. People who do not understand this are oblivious to the truth around them. Words, words spoken are not meaningless or mindless, even though many words are spoken without any thought given to them at all. And this is what our Lord said to the Jewish leaders one day, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. The heart of man the truth is, my friends, the heart of man is the spirit of a man. If you do not understand this, you should really study and figure it out. It is of great importance. Our Lord clearly presents us a direct connection with the words that people speak to what they have within their spirits. You could say, what comes out of your mouth comes out of your spirit. Our Lord tells this group of people because of the evil that they have living within their heart. It is impossible for them to speak anything but this evil. Good men speak good things because it is, because it is what they have been given in their hearts. Evil men speak evil things because it is all they have. The mouth, my friends, is a window into the heart and a witness to the true spirit there. This is important, yet people generally do not even attempt to understand it. <laughs> free speech, my friends, is not free. All things come with a choice and a cost. Here's another something here's another something our Lord spoke about. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. This is once again insight into the realms of the spirit and its relationship to the flesh. You see the spirit has precedence and dominance over the flesh. The only reason your body is sitting there listening to this is because your spirit is directing the life of your body to go where it wills. To quicken means to give life to. And why is this important, you say? Well, is it, it's important, you see, because of the way our Lord ends his verse. He said, my words are spirit and life. He was telling us, he was showing us where the words that he spoke came from. His words were from God because the spirit that animated his life was from God. And therefore it was God. Our Lord could speak life, truth, and abundance because the spirit of God within him was in itself all of these things, giving power to his words. We cannot separate his words from his spirit, you see, for both are the same. So, okay, that's Jesus. So what does this have to do with us, with you and me? Well, the truth is, see, since you were made in the image and likeness of God, 
you can see that if God's words are his spirit, then your words, my friends, are your spirit. After all, that is what our Lord said. From the abundance of what you have in your spirit, your mouth speaks. Now Jesus is described in the Bible as having the sword of the spirit coming out of his mouth. Now this is just another way to say the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. The sword of God's spirit, my friends, is his spoken, his written, and his living words. The sword of your spirit is also the words of your spirit and what lies within your heart. Many people in the world use their words to put people down to curse and even to blaspheme God's name almost without thought in every other sentence. This is a perfect picture, you see, of what they possess within their hearts. Whatever you have in your heart, my friends, is what will leak out of your mouth sooner or later. This is a law of God and the way things work and connect to the spirit realm from the natural realm, if you will and vice versa. Your mouth produces words that originated from the spiritual realm and then took seed within your own heart to produce the fruit of these words. These words are a result of whatever you put into your spirit, good or bad. And that's the truth we must remember. For God takes our words in most instances, much more seriously than most of us do. In Proverbs, God said this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now these are some of the strongest words found anywhere, anywhere in the Bible about the words that come out of your mouth. And this verse in Proverbs tells you very clearly that your tongue has power and as a result of what you say you may see either life or death. You see, it is because of the origin that the origin of speech is divine breathed into us from the breath of life himself that words have such awesome power. The words of Christ, my friends, are the link which binds all words together and the bar upon which they will all be judged. Words, you see, are never simply words. They are both power and for each of us they are identification. <laughs>